Yeah, so I got the idea to make this movie from a client, actually. He asked whether or not, following this, this mega mouse year we'd had, whether or not the following season the fish would be in the same sort of condition and would we be able to find them? Um, it was a good question, actually. So it got me thinking it would be great to see if that was the case and, and whether or not I could document it on film. And so a plan was made to fish three single days um, with three other anglers, to see if we could find similar quality fish. You know, we weren't going to make big missions of it, just off the road. And if they were there, if we could catch them and put it on film. You know, a few things to consider were how big were the fish? Were they going to be in similar places? Would the rivers have been changed? You know, was the holding water still going to be there? You know, my feeling was that they would have wintered quite well as it was a fairly mild winter without any significant floods. You know, and also would they have held on to that incredible condition they had from the previous season? Which seems unlikely when the, their food source had run out, the mice had run out. But as long as they wintered well enough and they were able to feed a lot with, them, with the amount of fat they had on them, um, they could probably feed in the colder water for longer. I had a feeling maybe they did hold condition, but it was something I was really keen to find out. Yeah, I remember walking in with Hans and into this gorge because it had been horrendously windy when we got there and, and we'd mucked around on a couple of spots and we just was howling with wind. It was just miserable and we decided about lunchtime we'd, we'd split to another spot into a little bit of a sheltered gorge and you know there was patches of sun, patches of cloud, the clouds were scudding through quickly. There was a forecast the next day of, of heavy rain and even though we wanted a couple of days, maybe three for our trip, well, I think we bailed on the second day actually because it really did come in big time. So we knew we had a short window to get it done and we knew there was the likelihood of a couple of big fish in there if we played our cards right and we were lucky we might bank a couple of big ones. And so we sort of hurried our way in and you know I remember thinking oh yeah, it was cold it was going to be windy and rainy so I'll, I'll wear waders. Walked my way in with the waders on and then when we got there no need for waders it came out quite good. And then it came in crappy again. It was tough to read what was going to happen that day, but we certainly, as the day panned out, we had some opportunities. The walk into the gorge was just fun. You know, you know, it's like the peripheral things are so great in fly fishing. And to walk along with a mate and, and stop and check the, the birds out and you know see all the native wildlife and stuff it was it's pretty special so we took our time even though in the back of our minds we had big fish you know that was the, that was what we were there for but I think it was always worth taking time to smell the roses. Day of a uh, three-day sort of 
trip away. We were going to head up a river, but there's howling wind, so we're coming to the sheltered gorge. And there's a fish down in here that I'm just going to go and throw a dry at. I walked up, stalked up the gorge, changed sides because of the light. And you've uh, seen a dark shadow. And uh, yeah, it was moving, so it was a fish. And uh, yeah, I think I, I had to change flies. One was too small, didn't have the, the size that, you know, couldn't get his attention. And uh, changed to a bigger black stone fly. Oh, best of luck, bud. Looks to be feeding a wee bit. Yeah, because it's a pretty pressured fishery. I avoid to put an indicator on or a dry dropper, just a nymph. Don't put it right in front of him, just to a side that you see him moving. And uh, just tighten up and, and uh, took its first cast. Yeah, nice. It's always a good feeling to know you're into something decent. First you have to get the cast in, the cast you're happy with, because you've got all the structure behind you, so it's, it's a little bit tricky to, to be precise under those conditions. And uh, if you master that, then you have to watch the fish and uh, you, you just tighten up, you feel into the fish, you, you, you're not actually striking, you, you, just, you just feel into it, you feel the weight and pull through. That's, that's all it is, because uh, you might get a second chance if you miss them. If you just rip it out, the show's over. The fish are big for a reason and uh, they know exactly what it is. So. We've been there for the for the big boys, and uh, the chances to get into something really nice they were there. And uh, I mean, the fish was sitting in faster water, so you could really you, you seen it was a good shape, but you couldn't really see if it if it is a ten pound plus fish. So uh, yeah, we put the cast in. Not, not that we've been uh, uh, disappointed, you know, it was still seven and a half pound, but um, yeah, in that case it. Uh, that's not what we were after. I mean, it was a nice warm-up. There was a howling wind up our bum all day, which I personally hate. I'd rather a headwind, to be honest. Um, it just makes accuracy really difficult. It straightens your cast to the near bank. So it's very hard to be accurate that day. I had a quick look around the edge and I found a couple of these little horn case caters, so it seemed like a good option. So I got a, a chance on a fish and it was, it was pretty windy. He was feeding okay. And I managed to nail the first cast on the spot and he swung over. went nuts, went up the top of the pool, went crazy up there, then he boosted downstream and then when he did, the water behind me, you know, downstream of me was just horrible. I 
he had a bit of a tense moment at one stage as he ran downstream and, and wrapped on a rock and somehow ripped my little indicator off. slipping and sliding and falling over and all sorts trying to land that fish and I couldn't figure why I couldn't subdue him because he didn't look more than a six or seven pounder to us. You need the bloody sand trigger work out, that's for sure. Yeah. But after multiple efforts at trying to net him and wondering why he kept getting the better of me, oh, I, I finally slid the net under him and realised why. Oh, here we go. What a mission. He wasn't that far short of ten pound. <laughs> It was an absolutely uh, stunning fish, and that was my day done. Uh, Good fish, mate. Yeah. It's taking me probably 200 metres down the river through bouldery pocket water, or slipping and sliding, fell on my ass. But it was all worth it, what an absolute stonker. Um, I haven't had the, the greatest of days, it's been a bit of a trial at times, but. Um, to get a fish of that sort of quality. Uh, well, mate, that's just it's made my day. I know your day was made much earlier on, but what a stonker that is, eh? Okay. See you later, fella. Well, that's cool. I'm really stoked about that. It's um, late afternoon and you know I've had a couple of touches. I've had one on a you know seven eight pound fish. So to get a much bigger one like that, and, um, couldn't be happier. Just magic stuff. Just seen a big fish. Um, it's sitting up in here. The sun's coming and going. We're sort of crouched down at the tail of the pool. It's just on the left of this foam line. And uh, Hans is going to go across the other side and see if he can pick him up. And so we maybe, I don't know, at times six or eight inches below the surface, other times he's right on the bottom. So. Um, no, it's hard to know whether you go heavy or soft, but I'm sure you'll work it out. Well, I'll try a little soft back on. Let's see what we can do. Oh yeah, cool. Best of luck, bud. You went up that, that hill, so you've seen him first. And um, yeah, it was obviously a, a pretty good fish. Yeah, I came up. Well, we made a little plan how to approach him.
He didn't even look at it, so I uh, swapped to a, to a heavier fly and put a cast in, but that was not heavy enough. Didn't want to spook him too much. It was too many casts. So uh, I went to a soft tackle with a, with a little split shot just to get it down to him. And um, I think the, the second cast, you know, in the right spot, I seen the fish moving and I'm um, just slightly tightened up, felt the weight and just pulled through and uh, it was on. Well done, mate. And then the first thing he turned around and came towards me. Beautiful. And uh, I've seen the depth of him and uh, yeah, that was uh, pretty, pretty obvious that that is a big fish. What's that? It's got the core, it's a real big fish. So he we went in, into the rocks and uh, had, to, had, to, had to work him out there. He's gone nuts now. And uh, yeah, it was a pretty good fight. Eventually, had to cross and get him down that rapid, and there was no time to, to grab a net. You know, I was so focused on that fish. I thought if I get him down that, that little ripple, um, I got my gloves on. So you know, if I grab him, I grab him, I get him. So um, yeah, played. So I mean, fish that size, um, they're, they're facing upstream, so I would have had to put that net net over his nose. Yeah, and, uh, for me, it was easier to grab him on the tail, and um, I had him. Great feeling. Oh, mate, that is an absolute lump. What a stunner of a fish. Knew he was big. Well, I'm actually a sort of a newbie to, to big fish. I mean, uh, the last two years, uh, sort of creaming it after 40 years of fishing. But, um, yeah, that, that fish, you, I'm, it stuck in my mind, you know, I caught a bigger fish afterwards in another system. But that one, the whole, the whole story, you know, that, that, that crystal clear pool, that spotting, you know, it's, it's just it lined up and it's... Uh, I remember that fish pretty good. You know. <laughs> that moment, my friend, is a magic moment. That's when dreams come true, mate. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. Good spotting. <laughs> yeah, after, after you catch a fish like that, uh, I mean, you don't have to catch 10 fish or 20 fish or whatever, you know. You catch one fish of that quality and uh, it makes the trip, not just the day, it, it, it makes the trip because uh, that's stuff you remember uh, for a long time. I had a cicada on, more in hope than expectation actually, as I approached the next run. And there was a fish in a little bit of faster water at the top of this run. Through the cast in to the shallow edge, he moved over and he snatched at it and bounced the fly off and then I realised how big he was, that was well north of um, double figures, it was a big, big fish. I think that was him the top and of the back there. Yeah, I was a bit, to be honest, a bit gutted at that stage of missing a fish like that. That's you! I remember Hans lining a big brownie that was above a large orange rock, just underwater. He could have crossed to get a better angle maybe, but he had a crack from our side with a big cicada drive. Oh, 
was a came up goof. Let's go there, give me 10 minutes. <laughs> Good luck. It's, it's, it was a bit more like my day, that one. It looked like the current pulled the dry out as it was striking. Hans was pretty adamant that he'd get him after a short rest. No, it wasn't. You couldn't get enough into it. Well, i got to say though, someone not unlike myself suggested maybe fishing from the other side might have been a little easier to get a nice set. <laughs> We found a smaller brown riding a foam line and looking very much like a cicada option for Hans. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's a feisty wee bugger. Bugger. Oh, you little tyke, what are you? Beautiful. Alright? Yeah. That was a bit of fun. That was good. Fighting art. Yeah. Again on the cicada. Yeah, I love it. Can't Smash. beat that little cicada. It was late in the day and I saw this fish on the far side of a rocky sort of boulder run with a couple of big rocks in the middle. We were on the on the right hand side, he was angling away from us towards the far bank in this weird back current. And I remember you saying, oh, We'll leave it till tomorrow, we'll come up, we've got another day to do it, at least yet. And it went through my mind, it's supposed to rain tonight, so maybe I'll, I'll just do it now. Because we were going to be walking back in the dark as it was. Hopefully that little guy there do the trick. So I hurriedly crossed over and had a quick go, and I got there and I thought, it looks a pretty good fish. Tied on a little, one of my favourite little cicada patterns, it's olive cicada. First cast I threw hit the, exactly the right place and he just came up without thinking and just smashed it. Displaced a bit of water, he pretty aggressively wanted that fly and straight away went down amongst the rocks and for, the, for four or five minutes he was out of sight and I just kept holding on him, holding on him, holding on him, trying to change the angles and I was thinking something's going to happen, five eggs tip it, something's going to happen here. Oh, 
boys, the hog. And finally, I started to cross, and then he, I managed to get the angle enough to pull him out. Once I pulled him clear of those rocks and into the shallows, I suddenly realised I was dealing with another double-figure fish. Three times, I think it was, I had the net right there, and he just bored away like a tractor. Just incredible power, you know, that just would not give in. The runs he did before were just crazy. Yeah, it's a double. Like, leave it till tomorrow, he says. Yeah. Like he's like I can tell you when it hit the net, I was a relieved man. Well, it's a um, miserable old day, it's howling wind, rain's coming in I think, but um, how that's worth it. I've had a, personally a quite a tough day, you, you landed that stonking like 12 and a half pound brown. Um, I've got a wonderful fish just under 10 and, and just hadn't got the double. I really wanted to get one on a cicada. And uh, in that little backwater over there, first cast. Poof. Wasn't sure what his size was, but then once I saw him down in there, I was like, uh oh, he's, he's a big fish. And I thought I was in trouble, and he went right under the rock about three times. Uh, 11 and a half pound fish. Couldn't be happier. Big deep fish, beautiful big spots, beautiful colours, big adipose fin, big jaw, big kite, just a brawler. The pretty ambitious plan was to get a, a big fish on a cicada. Um, I had probably two other chances today, it hadn't panned out, they've taken and come off. Um, and then got that absolute tank. It's one of my favourite fish of the season so far, and there's been plenty of good ones. A fish like that puts you on cloud nine, and you know I could have floated home to be honest. Look at that, eh? Wow. Oh, well, thanks, fish. Mwah. Thanks for playing the game, buddy. Off you go. Wow. We're talking about making the magic happen today, and. Um, that's certainly a piece of magic, that's for sure. Couldn't be happier. I'll sleep very well tonight, I think. The great thing about fly fishing is the places it often takes you. And watching these two red stags having a late evening feed was a pretty magical way to cap off a pretty stunning day.